Following on from the previous video, I've now written up the answer for the how does a writer try to show that Mike Perham's voice voyage was really tough question. Um, again, this has taken slightly longer than it would in the exam, and it's slightly more detailed than you would be expected to. This is kind of the English teacher answer, rather than what you might actually write in the exam but it gives you a sense of how you can use embedded quotes, um, how you can push it a little bit further, and again I'm trying to just cover the detail here so you have a model to work from, although when you answer it it may be a bit shorter and you may not use quite such complex sentences. I split it into the two sections as suggested by the question, and wherever possible I've tried to be really specific in using subject terminology, so my opening line um, I don't do any sort of introduction, I just go straight into it saying in the second paragraph the writer lists several statistics to show Perham's voyage was really tough, including how Perham had to travel as far as 30,000 miles confined or cooped up in the small space of a 50 foot boat. So I could have said things there, different things to show his voyage was tough, um, but I've used the word statistics to be as specific as I can. I've also used three very short quotations rather than using the full sentence which allows me to really focus in on these two statistics 30,000 miles and 50 foot boat and I've translated cooped up as confined so I've just put them next to each other confined or cooped up to show that I've made an inference there. Fryce tells us that Perham could only sleep for 10 minute intervals again we've got another short embedded quote which would be really tough for anyone so here I've used the word from the question, uh, really tough to link it back to the question. Uh, would be really tough for anyone, even if they weren't piloting a boat, which he is doing. I've tried to make my answer as cohesive as possible. So I've tried to write a full paragraph where each sentence follows on from the last. Uh, that's not essential. It would be looked out for when awarding higher marks as well as the points you're making. Uh, but if you just list points in a repetitive way, that will also um, quite solidly get you at least seven marks if you're listing enough. So I've made it more cohesive um, by following on saying this led Craig Lendy from Guinness World Records to explain how this would be tough for even the most experienced of sailors, but especially for such a young person. Again, using the word tough, linking it back to the question. The writer also lists the various damages the boat suffered during the tough voyage, tough again, such as to the autopilot and electricity systems. I haven't felt the need to list all uh, four or five of the ones mentioned in the text. I've just given two examples because it is enough to make my point. The writer tells us that Perham had to deal with storms lasting 24 hours and tells us how Perham was totally exposed by including Perham's quote, there's nothing to stop the wind. Consequently, this leads Perham himself to say the voyage was really tough. So I've given a couple more points, 24 hour storm, I haven't really explained that because uh, I feel it's obvious enough that dealing with a storm lasting 24 hours would be tough. Um, as well as the quote saying he was totally exposed. When he said there's nothing to stop the wind, it just shows that he's got some no defence against it. I've rounded my paragraph off to give it a sort of mini conclusion by using that uh, quite obvious quote, make, uh, quote that Perrin makes where he says it's really tough. So I've just finished with that um, to finish off the paragraph. I then moved on to the second part. So I'm using the headings they gave us. Um, Sometimes a question will specifically say you must use these headings and then you have to. This one just gives you the option of using the headings, so I've chosen to. You could have mixed up the language and the what happened, but by splitting up as they've suggested, it makes sure that you write a roughly equal amount for each one. Okay, so wonderful words and phrases used by the writer. Again, I've gone straight into it. You don't need to do an introduction. Don't waste time saying uh, the writer uses many words and phrases to show that his voyage was tough. That won't get you a mark. You just repeat the question. Instead, go straight into your first point, but link it back to a question, like I've done here. The writer calls Perham a, quote, conqueror in the heading, connoting someone who overcomes tough challenges. Got that word tough? It links to a question. Um, and then making this another cohesive paragraph, so this sentence leads on. There is a co there is a theme of conquering and fighting, really tough challenges throughout the piece. I didn't close off my inverted comma there. 
through the writer's inclusion of verbs, again I'm using that subject specific terminology, so the writer including verbs such as battling and buffeted, which again link into this theme of conquering and the toughness of it. The writer emphasises how tough Perham's voyage was by telling us he was, quote, surviving on minimal sleep, suggesting he was in a life or death situation. So I've made an inference about that word surviving, which shows I'm aware of the writer's technique in their language choice. Um, I'm extending out this sentence, so suggesting he was in a life or death situation, which is further supported. So wherever possible, try and make two points in a sentence to say if you have to start a new sentence, uh, which is supported by the description of a voyage as gruelling. The writer also makes use of contrast to show how tough Perham's voyage was. Firstly, by comparing the things keeping Perham awake with the things most teenagers worry about, and later by contrasting Perham's quote that he felt tiny out there with the huge seas and monstrous storms he had to face. Also showing that Perham's voyage was made tough by being small and powerless was the writer's use of the passive voice in saying Perham was flung, making him seem like an inanimate object with no control over the situation. So I've talked about the um, writer's use of contrast in two different instances, and then I finish with that um, slightly more subtle uh, thing I noticed where the writer was using this passive voice and saying he was flung, and how that makes him seem like an inanimate object or like a, a rag doll being flung about. So that should easily um, get 10 marks within the foundation paper, and I've probably included um, slightly more points there than I would need. So you could write uh, a couple of slightly short paragraphs on that using a similar model and still be able to achieve at least that C grade and hopefully even above. So try for another paper doing the how question using this as a model, seeing what you can take from this in terms of going straight into your first point, in terms of using short embedded quotes, and in using more than one point in a single sentence. Also, don't forget, wherever possible, use specific subject terminology. Try and ban the word word from your writing, because instead of word, you can say adjective or verb or adverb. It shows the examiner you know a little bit more about what you're talking about. Also, try and ban the word things. If it's a statistic, call it that. If it's a fact, call it that. If it's personification, give it its proper name. That will again show the examiner you know what you're talking about and will help you to get more marks.